Hey everybody and welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as our friends at Joanne.com. It's the annual Fall Stitch Along. I'm going to be hosting one project today, but my friends Marley Bird, also Moogly, and Daisy Farmcrafts have other projects that we're going to be working on this fall. So today is my turn. We're going to be making a square bottom basket using Bernat Blanket Extra Thick. So what do you need to be successful with crochet? You need an opportunity to be able to finish within a reasonable time frame, and this particular uh, basket really fits the bill for that. It'll allow you to be able to crochet pretty quickly because the yarn strand is the size of rope, and uh, for that, it will go pretty quickly. But if you've never crocheted before, today is your lucky day because I am going to teach you step by step. And we're going to be using a size Q hook, and in Canadian or metric, it's a 16 millimeter hook. And so it's a big hook, thick yarn, happy ending relatively quickly. So you'll need two balls of this particular yarn in order to play it. This is just one of the colors, so you can choose any color and you can find that at joanne.com or Joanne Retail Stores near you. Before I go in the studio, you gotta check out this basket. It's really thick and it's really quite strong. It'll stand on its own. And don't tell joanne.com, but the cat has been sleeping inside this basket. So cat basket, anybody? So the first step first is to slide off your ball band and just get the exterior strand. Normally I would crochet from trying to find the center, but it's really tightly wound in this particular product. So just find the outside strand and just get it right to the tip. Now, if you're right-handed, you're going to want to slide your ball to your left-hand side, so this side. And if this, this is the left-handed tutorial, it will be showing you on the right side. So we want to slide it off and out of the way and let's just talk about the hook. As we begin today, we have video chapters. So if you don't need a basic lesson on how to crochet, you can just use the video chapters to scan ahead to the project itself. So how are you gonna hold the hook? You wanna hold it so that it's most comfortable for you. Some people hold it in a pencil formation, just like this. And myself, I was taught the knife grip like this. And because this is thick yarn, it may be a lot easier for you to crochet like this than it will be to the pencil. So I teach always using the knife grip like this, and I have the orientation in my hand the way that I want it, and I'll explain about that. So let's just get to the yarn and show you how to hold it with your other hand. So let's put the hook aside and we'll leave that off there. And your other hand here that is not holding the hook is the yarn feeding hand. Usually when you have stress in your hand, it's usually from this, it's actually not from the hook itself, it's usually the yarn feeding hand because all the tension and all the power is in this hand. So what I want to do is that I want to position this yarn into my hands. The way that I'm going to show you is just an option. And if you have a better way of doing it, then you can do it any way that you wish. How I would do it, and if you're ever watching my tutorials, lay your hand down in front. Just open up your fingers, just splay them open. And I want you to put the hand over top of the strand. So just move the strand in and put the hand down like this. Now, what I need you to do is grab the strand and pull up and don't let your pinky release that. So just go up like this. You can close your hands now. And now take the strand and go over top of your hand like that. Now, I want you to use your middle finger and your thumb to grab onto this piece. This finger here is used for tension. So I want you to pick up your hand, so make it levitate and rotate your hand. And as you do it, take your two fingers like this and you can use your other hand to hold and just pinch. So now you can see that it's over top of your hand this finger is up and these two fingers are pinching. I'll demonstrate one more time. Hand down, okay. And levitate and turn your hand over and use your two fingers to pinch. And you can look at it like this. Okay, so this is the basic formation on how to hold your yarn. So this finger here, if I release down, see the tension loosens. And if I go up, 
it gets strong. So this finger going up and down when you crochet is part of the tension. So when it's up, you have like a tight violin string and when it's down, you have loosey goosey. So this is what this finger is doing and the rest of them is all going to just come in line, just like you see. So let's create a slip knot and this is the starting knot that will begin your crochet project. This is a slip knot. All projects need a starting knot in order to go. And what we have to do is that we have to use our finger and I want you to point the finger just like this. And with this strand, come in front of your hand and I want you to wrap it around the finger twice. So just pull over top of your finger, back down and go back over your finger again and back down. Just try again point. This is in front of your hand. Over top of your finger, around. Over top of your finger, and around. If you're ready to continue, I want you just with this hand, grab onto two pieces like this. You're grabbing onto the strand towards the yarn ball and the loose end, and open up your hand here and just pinch that with your three fingers. Okay, so you just can pull them together and pinch. So let's play the game of leapfrog to show you how to start your knot. And so you have the two frogs here. This is the back frog, this is the first frog. So this frog has to jump over to this one to play the game of leapfrog. So you're just gonna pick up that there and you just gotta release a little bit of tension out of your hands. So just let your hands open up a little bit and it jumps over the top of the first frog. And I'm just using my finger just to stabilize that frog. Now the other frog here wants to jump over because that one just jumped and wants to continue to play the game, but there's no finger left and so when you pick him up to jump over, you are just going to go right up over top of your finger. And he's gonna jump over top of the first frog and right up over top of the finger. And that is your slip knot right there. This is the very starting knot. It's easier to see this in more of a thinner yarn, but that's how it is. So let me just show you one more time. So you're gonna wrap and you're going to play the game of leapfrog. And come over, over and that's your starting knot. Now that we have our successful knot we want to grab our hook now and we want to slide into the hook and we want to slide it down enough to the get to the shaft here. So you have the head, you have the throat, and you have the shaft. So just think about anatomy really and you want to shove it down to the shaft. The shaft is the size of the stitch formation that your project will have. So if you stay down in the throat, it'll be a different uh, um, circle, uh, circumference versus going down the shaft. And so now the yarn that is leading to the ball, you just wanna kind of pull on it a little bit and just tighten it a little bit onto the hook. And you should be able to easily slide this up and down the shaft of your hook. From here, we have to think about how we're going to get this hook out of this hole. Now, if you pull the hook like this, it snags. Up, it snags. Back, it snags. The only time that you can get this hook out is if the hook turns upside down and you're forcing it up. So you're just using it and just pushing up a little bit and it slides right out, just like this. So now that we know that, whenever we go to pull this out, we always have to turn it upside down. So we go and collect yarn, turn it upside down and pull out. And that will happen every time we're doing stitch work in crochet. So remember, the only way that it will come out is if the hook is facing down. So in order to start crochet, we normally have to do chain work, which is the foundation on which everything built up on top of it, whether it's um, even a starting of a circle or going in rows like we will be doing today. So what we have to do is that we have to get our hand down. So let's put our hand down and let's move it to the orientation that I showed you before. So you can either just lift your pinky up 
and slide the yarn in and then back down. And then using your two fingers here, you're going to pinch the knot, okay, the slip knot. So just pinch. And so the orientation of your hand should look like this. So in order to do a chain, it's called yarning over. So if you see YOH in patterns, it's called yarn over. And what you're going to do is that you're going to turn the hook and collect the yarn. So you just, ro it's like a rowboat action. So you collect the yarn and the only way to get it through here is that you continue to rotate that until the hook is upside down and you can pull through. So let's just practice a few of these. And you just pull through. And what do you need to do? You need to shove it down to the shaft to get the thickness of the stitch itself. And that pulls a little bit more strand into the stitch so that it becomes even looking. So then you can let go and now grab this base of this stitch and just yarn over, turn the hook over and pull. And then push to the shaft. Okay, so then push it around and pull. And we're going to get to the project shortly, but I want to show you the basics and then push. It's so important that you get down to the shaft because then it will be very even. So yarn over and pull through. So let's just do a few more so you get used to it. So push down to the shaft and rotate and nothing will fall apart on you. So you can let it go. See, it doesn't go anywhere. You can actually drop your hook. It doesn't go anywhere. This is not like knitting where it's very finicky. Crochet is very easy to be able to maintain. The trick is, is to shove it down to the shaft. So what I want you to do before you continue, just put me on pause and keep practicing these chains. You can do as many or as little as you wish. And then when we come back, I'm gonna show you something else and don't pull out your work. So keep the chain on the hook and I'll be right back. So let's talk about this yarn. This yarn is really thick and fluffy, but if you get it wet, it will narrow down. And if you use your fingers and do this, you can feel the core of the strand itself. And it's that core that you're going to use in order to feel within the stitch work. So even though it looks really fluffy, if I just pinch on it, I can feel with my fingertips the core of each one of the strands. Okay, so do you have this yarn? Do you, can you feel the core? Leave me a comment, do you feel the core? Okay, it's right in there. And if you were to pull it apart, it would look like it was almost like loom knitted. So that's how we're going to be able to crochet this thing. And I'm going to demonstrate for you on how to do the single crochet. So right now, it looks like this. So if it's all twisted on you like this, which is normal, you just kind of want to make sure that when you pick it up that you want to keep the orientation so that even uh, if the rest of it is all twisted, you want to maintain it so that at least the stitch work that you're going into is not twisted. So the pattern, most patterns when you do single crochet, it says second chain from the hook. So what it is, is that we have number one and number two. Okay, I know it's almost hard to see, but it's, do you see it? So see how it's split like this? That's a stitch. See this? That's a stitch. And we have to go second chain from the hook. So we have one and two. So you can pinch them and you can feel the core. And when you pinch, you'll be able to get the two strands that are on top and there will be one left underneath. And I want you to stick your hook through this hole. And no, normally if you're experienced with crochet, you won't have to be as fiddly as I am, but I'm just demonstrating for you. And I wanna shove the hook through that stitch. And I wanna push it down to the shaft. So now I have the two strands of that on the top and there's gonna be one strand at the base. And I'm going to yarn over, so collect the yarn and pull through. shove it down the shaft, and then yarn over and pull through two. That's a single crochet. 
It's a very, very thick stitch. So now we're gonna move on to the next stitch. Do you see where it is? It's right here. Again, you can feel your cores. So just pinch it and you can separate them with your fingers if you want to, because it's so thick. And you can just shove your hook into there. And again, the two strands will be on top here. And there's gonna be one at the base. And you're going to yarn over, pull through, shove down your shaft, and then yarn over, pull through two. So you can practice as many times as you want to uh, for this particular concept. Do you see the next sh stitch? It's right here. Again, use your fingers and you can feel where the core is. So just going in. Now, what happens if you grab the two wrong strands is technically incorrect, but because this yarn is so fluffy is that you can really hide in any imperfections that you may have. And if you look at it and you say it doesn't look right, you can always pull out. So the trick really is just to make sure that you have two strands on top of your hook and one strand at the base. So I'm using my thumb and my finger to be able to feel where the core is. And so I'm gonna go in and then pull through and then pull through too. And that's going to be the basic stitch that you're going to see throughout this whole project, except for the very end project in, in the end. So what I want you to do now is that we're going to continue now to the real tutorial. And basically you learned how to hold your yarn. You learned how to do the chain and also single crochet, which is the basics of beginning to learn to crochet. So without further ado, let's head on into the project now. If you've been learning along with me, now's the time to pull out your project. And so the difference between knitting and crocheting is very simple. In knitting, we have the knitting needles. Let me show a graphic. And all the loops are, crack, are collected on top of the knitting needles. So what happens is that you open the stitch when you start your project, and then at the very end, you close the stitch. Crochet is different. Crochet, we create a stitch and we close the stitch immediately. And that's why I'm able to pull this out like so. So with knitting, because you're collecting on a, on a knitting needle the whole time, is that it will always stay open until the very end. We're here, whenever we create a stitch, we close the stitch immediately, and it will allow you to, to do what is called as frogging. So it means to rip it, rip it. So get it, get it. <laughs> so we can go all the way to back to the beginning and start all over again. So let's begin our tutorial work today. And if you decided to skip over the tutorial, just uh, welcome and we're gonna begin now. This yarn is so thick that we don't wanna waste any of this yarn at all because it does not take a long time to get to the very end of the ball. So we're going to create our slip knot. We've already uh, did the tutorial for that on the slow motion. And so we're gonna create our slip knot to begin. And we wanna insert our hook. And then we're gonna pull tight with the strand that is leading to the ball, but it should be able to slide down your shaft beautifully. So let's begin the beginning chain. Just to recap how to hold the yarn, you can just pull it up like this and pinch. Just pinch the knot that you started with. This loop here never counts as one on a project. So when you go to start for the very first time, we have the chain 11. This is not number one, this is just the starting. So we're gonna re-yarn over, so lean back and turn the hook upside down and pull through. And we're gonna count to 11. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. And this here is going to be the very base of your ba basket, just like that. So let's officially move to row number one. Let's begin row number one. We're gonna go second chain from the hook. 
So remember, this is one, this is two. So if you've already done the beginning part of this tutorial, you'll understand that already. And I'm using my fingers to kind of crunch and work my way through so that I can feel where the core of the strands are. And I can just insert in to where I opened it up. There should be two strands on top. You can see the two different colors in this one. And there should be one strand at the base. And you're gonna yarn over, pull through, slide down your shaft, and then yarn over, pull through two. That's a single crochet. And that's your very first stitch. So here is your next stitch right here. It's easier when the colors are different on um, both strands to see it. And I'm just using my finger, I'm just wiggling, and I can find where the hole is and insert in. Yarn over, pull through. And then yarn over, pull through two. Okay, there's the next stitch right here. So my goal at the end of this is that there should be a total of 10 stitches all the way across. And I'll show you how to count that when we get there. So work your way down your chain of just single crocheting. Remember that crochet is not a race. It's not who, about who's fastest. It's about the stitching journey and the, and the joy it brings you. So don't lose sight of that when you're learning to crochet for the first time. You'll see people online crocheting the most amazing things. And a lot of it is people just really determined or really having a lifetime skill. Now, just use your fingers if you're struggling to find where to stick your hook through and pull through. This really is great yarn to be able to learn to crochet with. And the, and the reality is, is that because it's so thick, it's really easy to feel where your fingers need to go in order to do your stitch work. So visually, you may not see it here on camera, but I can definitely feel it with my fingers. Sometimes, like I'm putting on one strand and I'm just, wiggling to get the other strand on because there should always be two in the up. There you go. Now it's very easy in my job to um, provide a tutorial where all the stitch work is showing you seamlessly and how to go through things. So it's so important in a beginning tutorial to show you that if I'm struggling, what are the challenges to be able to overcome so that you don't have the same issues or you know how to fix the issue itself. The starting chain on any project is always the hardest. So if you're finding this really difficult, just keep powering through because it gets a lot easier from this moment. Now I'm not sure I have enough stitches, so we're gonna count those in just a moment. And what we need to do is count the tops of the, the project. So starting with the first one that's behind the hook. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so we have officially 10 stitches on here, which is right. And now we're going to start our next few rows in order to get to 10 inches high. Now that we're all the way across and we have verified our count, we wanna take the project, pick it up, and put the base on the opposite side. And now we're going to crochet across this row. And you will literally be able to feel where the stitches go and the stitches will be a lot more looser because they're consistent if you've been shoving it down the shaft. So whenever you start a new row, let's get this into our hands, we're going to honestly just chain one to begin. So row boat back or yarn over and pull through the chain and shove down the shaft. That's not a stitch, that's just a builder to get to the height of the stitch. And the first stitch is right directly below. And you can use your fingers to be able to ply open the core to be able to see it. And it's right here. So you're just gonna go in and there will always be two strands on top. Okay, they're the same color this time, but that's where they are and you yarn over, pull through. 
and you pull through two. That's your first single crochet. So you'll always have 10 stitches going across. So the next one is right here. See how I can just, my fingers just fall right into the hole? Because it's fluffy, it doesn't give the impression when you're at home there. And you just pull through and then pull through two. Okay, just use your fingers. And in time, you probably won't have to do that. You can just trust yourself to know where to shove your hook. So I'm just gonna take you through this row. So you go at your own pace. I'm not going anywhere. See, the trick is to shove it down that shaft. And you will notice that it will no longer be doing a, a weird spin of the beginning chain like we had started with. So off camera, I've kind of unwound the ball a little bit so that it doesn't show that I'm stopping, but <laughs> I didn't guess this one, I'm fine. So just keep releasing more yarn off the ball and then there's no tension of you fighting the yarn to get off the ball. <coughs> so you're gonna continue right to the very end. How will you know the end? You will be able to feel it. It's right here. And if you're ever not sure, when you're done this stitch, you should be able to count 10 again across the top. It will naturally curve in like this because of tension but you can just pull it on out and it will relax. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So what we have to do is that we have to continue to crochet this row until we get 10 inches in the height. So you'll need uh, just a tape measure in order to do that. And you can see that these stitches, this is only two rows and you already have three and a half inches. So to get to 10 will not take you very long. So let me just take you through one more row and then I'm gonna rely on you to get to the 10 inches. So to start a new row, turn your work, position your hand and start again. So yarn over like that, chain one to begin, and then you can feel within the core where the first stitch is, it's directly below. Yarn over, pull through and pull through two. And you're just gonna to continue to do that all the way across, just like I just showed you. And I want you to do as many rows as it takes in order to get to 10 inches in the height from the base to the row that will finish it being 10 inches. And I'll be right back in a few moments and I'll have that done for you. It'll just take me a few minutes off camera. So when I last left you, this is five minutes of work and to get to the height, we can just use a tape measure like that, it's 10 inches or it's 25.4 or 25.5 centimeters in order to get that to go. So we're now going to work in the circumference of so going all the way around and I'm gonna show you some tricks in order to do that and we're going to begin our journey. So let's start and we're gonna start going around. So right where you left off is right where you're going to start. So whenever we do a corner piece, we have to put in three single crochets into the same stitch. So each one of the corners will have three singles, three, 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 and three, and we need to have evenly spaced 10 single crochets. And I know what you're thinking, well, if you only had 10 stitches across, you know, how is that gonna happen? You've gotta put in two stitches into the same spots at different spots. We have to evenly space out our 10 single crochets. So let's begin to do that. So right where we are, we're going to chain up one to start as a builder. And you're in a corner spot. So just use your fingers, wiggle them. And in that same stitch, I need you to place in three single crochets. So just yarn over. So one, two, and three. So lots of stitches all within the one. So we know that the very final stitch here is also the, the corner. So we know that there's only gonna be eight stitches here along the top. So what we have to do is we have to make sure at least two of them have two single crochets in it. And I would probably do about the quarter mark and the three quarter mark in order to do it. But just, just say that you're gonna just slam in 10. 
So just start and count 10. So go into the next one and we say one. And the next one, two. And I'm gonna put two into the next one. So I'm gonna put another one in. So this is three and I'll put another one in there. This is four. Go to the next one. This is five. Six. I'm gonna put two in this one. So this is seven. I'm just guessing. And eight. And then the next two in a row. So this is nine and 10. And the very last one here should have three single crochets because it's gonna turn. So we're gonna put three into that one. So one, two, and three. So now we just have your eight single crochets across there. You have your two corners done so far. So now you're gonna turn it and you're gonna work your way down the side. So when you're just down the side, it's kind of the same way. The stitches aren't really defined um, so carefully in that case. So you just have to evenly space it out. So start and just start counting. And we need to put 10 before you hit the very corner. So we'll start the next one. So we have one. And just feel your way across. There's really no wrong answer. It's nice and fluffy. So two, three, I'm gonna put another one in there. This is four, next one is five, six, I'm gonna put another one in this one. So we'll have seven, eight, I'm gonna put another one in there. This is nine. And another one is 10. And then the corner is the very last one. So I'm just spacing it out. So this is the very corner. So the corner will have three single crochets. So what I'm gonna release for you, this is a challenge, it is a stitch along. So I'm gonna leave the last two sides for you to be able to figure that out. And when we come back, I'll show you how to join it to the very beginning one. And then we'll start the next process. So this is, probably the hardest part of this whole idea. And what we're doing is we're creating a circling formation around the square. So please do the other two sides and I'll be right back. As I'm coming all the way around, I'm about to hit where the tail is. So how you can hide that, that's gonna be my very corner. When I go to crochet into the corner and put my three single crochets, I'm gonna crochet right up over top of that tail end. In tutorial work, I always call them the stragglers. I think my mom used that term, that's how I got that. So I just say, just crochet right over top of the straggler so it gets stuck underneath the stitch work. And therefore you won't have to deal with that later. So I'm putting my three into there. So that's how you would deal with that. And I just gotta finish my final side. So um, if you go over enough of it, you can safely cut that down and get it out of your way. And therefore you don't have to deal with it later. So now I've come all the way back around. I've not yet joined it. So I did get my 10 in here. Remember that we did this corner when we started. So what I want to do is just find the first single crochet of the corner and you want to slip into the top of that stitch. And then yarning over, pulling it through. And then you continue to pull through this one like that. And that is going to be your slip stitch join. So now we're going to start the remaining of the rounds in order to get to the very top of the basket. And what I need you to realize is that you're looking at the bottom of the basket right now of how you've been crocheting. So now when you go to crochet, you're just gonna lean it up and the whole basket on this side will start turning in to do this. So this is the interior of the basket. So let's begin our first round. To begin our first round, and you're going to just pick it up and you're going to yarn over and chain one. 
it's a builder. And right where it's done the join, you can feel it with your fingers if you don't see it, is that that's a single crochet. So the first round, because we have literally um, squeezed in our stitches where we needed to, some of the stitches will be compact, but you're gonna notice that it will start to evenly space its way out. And all you're going to do is just trace around in every single crochet and make sure that it is a single crochet. Okay, so you don't gotta worry about counting. Okay, and you're going to single crochet in each stitch. So even when you get to the corners, just one single crochet in each, and you're going to notice that it's going to start rounding off. And I'll be back in a moment. So just continue around, and I'll see you in a few moments from now. So I'm coming all the way back around, and what you have to pay attention to the most is that sometimes we believe that this here is part of the very, is, is a stitch itself, and then you have the top of here. You have to realize that when this reaches over, this is part of the first one, and it's very hard to tell on a thicker project like this. Um, but if you start counting your stitches, you will notice that there is a total of 52 around. So you should be able to have 52. So if you put in a stitch there and you count that there's 53, you can tell, honestly, that's probably where you're making your mistake. Now for myself, because it's harder to tell with the variegated yarn and also the thickness of what is the starting, what I like to do is that I put in a stitch marker right at the last stitch. So what I do is just pull this out and just go right into the stitch itself and just put in a piece of yarn here. So every time I go around, I just move this up so that I'm able to tell the start and the stop of something like this. So then we just slip stitch to the top of the first, like this. So pull nice and tight. Okay, so don't be cheap about it uh, being too loose because you don't want it to be sloppy. So now we're going to continue to crochet then in a continuous circle. So what I'm going to do is that I'm looking at my yarn ball. I'm going to see you uh, when this yarn ball runs out and I will be back to show you how I deal with that. We are using two balls in this project and you're going to notice right now that it's starting to buckle up as well. So right now we're looking at the very base. So when it buckles, you should be looking at it from this point of view. So eventually I'm going to be crocheting in this format like this. Okay. So continue then to do as many rounds as you need to do. And I will see you back here when I go to change the yarn ball over to the other one. So I've now just come to the end of this strand here and I'm now ready for the next one for the new ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the way that the yarn companies tie these because normally the way that you tie things and you've been taught, they sometimes slip out. So maybe that doesn't happen to you, maybe it does. So what I want to do is tie these two together. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go over top. Okay. And I'm going to take this one here and circle underneath. Okay. So then what I want to do is that I want to take this one here and go over top of the other one and circle that inside that knot there. So it's opposite to what you did on the way that you crossed over and then you can safely tighten that together. Okay, and pull nice and nice and tight and then you could just trim this down nice and short And then when you crochet this into the project, then you want to make sure yeah, it's not coming out. You want to make sure that you favor the knot to the inside of the basket. So I'm just going to continue to crochet with the strand. And when the knot happens, which is right here, I want to favor that to the inside. So see how it kind of butts up there. So you're not going to see this knot ever because it's fluffy yarn. Okay. And so therefore you would barely even tell it's even there. So if I never showed you, you probably wouldn't even know. So you're just going to continue to crochet and you want to crochet so the height of the bag sitting up will be about 10 inches. But I want to, what I want to tell you though is that you need to do one more round after the 10 inches done. So keep an eye on the yarn ball to make sure that you're not going to run out of yarn. And maybe if you are going to run out of yarn, you just end a little earlier so that you can do the final row, which will be a single crochet row just for your information, but it will be slightly different. So I continue to crochet then and I'll see you when this is 10 inches high. Okay, so now I'm back and from the base to where I am right now is 10 inches and I still have yarn on my ball to be able to do the final round. 
The final round is called the reverse single crochet. It's also known as a crab stitch. And what we're going to do is do the single crochet, but do it backwards. And so instead of progressing forward to the point of the, of the hook, we're going to reverse and go in the opposite direction. So what we're going to do is to do this is that we're still going to chain one to build and you're still going to single crochet in the first one that you start. So you're just going to single crochet, pull through, and then pull through two. So if you don't like this stitch, even seasoned crocheters don't like this stitch, but if you don't like it, just continue to circle uh, crochet around one time. But to do it the way that the sample has it, we're going to do it in reverse. So you're going to find the stitch before this one, okay, not after, but before, and you want to put the hook into the stitch before. So you're just gonna turn and dive right into the stitch before. And you are going to yarn over and pull that through. Okay, make sure you get it to the shaft and then pull through the two. This is going to create an extra thick border to your uh, basket to finish off. And you'll notice it after the third stitch and what it looks like. So now we're gonna come into the stitch before. So dive in, pull through, and then pull through two. And in my hands, it feels like it's a bulging rim it's almost like a pail in this, in the sense that the top of this now feels like it has something to grab onto. Okay, so you're just gonna continue to go into behind. Pull through, pull through two. I'll show you one more time. So the one before, it takes a bit of getting used to even if you're a seasoned crocheter, so if you're new and you're struggling, um, this is not a big deal to, to worry about. So you're going to continue all the way around where I'll meet you and we'll finish this off together. So I'm coming close to the end and I want to join it to the beginning one, which is right here. Obviously you can see that. So I'm going to come into my last one and then I want to slip stitch to the beginning. So we're just slipping in the different direction. That's all. So we're going to pull through and through. So pull through everything on the hook. So now I want to trim this yarn down and what we're going to do is we're going to finish with a tie because this is obviously too thick for a regular needle. So I want to pull that through that loop and that will lock it from coming undone. So now that I have it pulled out like this, I'm going to take this tail and I'm going to take a smaller crochet hook and not where it's coming out of where I pulled that through, but I want to just go down through a certain spot. So just grab that crochet hook and a smaller one is a little bit easier and just pull down into the inside of the basket. Okay, and I would go down a little bit further as well. So right where it's coming out of, you don't wanna go into the same spot but just come down a little bit further and make sure that when you put this through that you're not putting it all the way through the basket. You're just staying on the strands on the inside. And when you pull on that strand, don't pull on it to the point that you're changing the edge. Okay, so I'm going to pull the loop here and I'm gonna put the straggler or the loose end through that loop. And what that will do is that it will tie itself onto itself and pull it tight okay just be careful on how you do that okay and if you want to do it one more time because i'm a little bit paranoid with that kind of stuff pull through another piece and pull through this will be on the interior basket and just pull Noticing that I'm holding the knot as I'm doing that because it, it will help it stabilize. And then what you can safely do then at this point is just trim here. And that'll be on the inside of your basket. And therefore you got rid of the tail ends and that's gonna be awesome. And this is a great day. A tisk and a tasket, I just crocheted a basket. If you do one yourself, 
You may just think it's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me, and we hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.